Hello, I'm Steve Collins. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine. And today we're going to talk about Chinese medicine, what it is, how it works, and some of the tools that we use when treating patients. Now, Chinese medicine has a history of over 3,000 years. It is a very clinically relevant medicine, and today it is just as powerful as it was 3,000 years ago. It is a fully developed medical model. It is separate from Western medicine. By fully developed, that means that it can handle many different problems, many different complaints. There are some things that Chinese medicine does very well. There are some things that, like Western medicine, it doesn't do so well. Part of the job of a doctor of Chinese medicine is to be able to differentiate those things and to be able to say, well, these things that Chinese medicine can handle, we can possibly help you with. One of the central concepts of Chinese medicine is that of qi. What is qi? Qi is nothing mystical, it is nothing magical. All that qi is, is the fundamental energy of life. Every living thing has qi. Insects, plants, animals, people, every living thing has qi. In people, qi is that which allows the heart to beat, it allows the nerves to conduct impulses, it allows the blood to flow. Sometimes qi can become stagnated, sometimes it can become deficient, sometimes it can essentially become out of balance. When qi is out of balance, disease or pathology presents. Chinese medicine is essentially all about maintaining balance or restoring balance to the body. And we do this by harmonizing the body's qi. Sometimes we strengthen or cultivate the body's qi using several tools such as acupuncture or herbs. Now how does qi flow through the body? Qi flows through the body through a series of channels or meridians, some of which you can see on this diagram. The best way to think of these channels is to imagine a river. And you know how water saturates the banks of a river? Well, that's how qi saturates the tissues. It flows through the channels. And we can access the qi through a series of points. There are over 360 points on the body. Think of these points as ports along the river. Some of these ports are little one-horse towns with a stop sign and a post office. There's not much there. Some of these points are major points that have influence on many different parts of the body and communicate with other parts of the body. So there are essentially two difficult parts of Chinese medicine. The first is figuring out what's going on with the patient. And the second is determining which points to use to treat a given problem. Once we determine what's going on with the patient, then we can use a number of tools to treat that patient. Now in Chinese medicine, when we talk about organs, and we talk about the heart and the lungs and the spleen and the kidney and the liver. We're talking about a whole constellation of things. For example, the heart. When I talk about the heart in Western medicine, I'm talking about the myocardium and only the myocardium and the electrical system that runs the, the heartbeat. But in Chinese medicine, when I talk about the heart, I'm not talking solely about this. I'm talking about a whole constellation of things, including the small intestine, 
summertime, the color red, the tongue, the emotion of joy, hot foods. So I'm talking about a whole constellation when I talk about the heart. And one of the wonderful things about the, the medicine itself is that it does not separate mind from body. And it looks at the body as a whole. So when I talk about the heart, I'm also talking about its relation to the kidneys. I'm talking about its relation to consciousness or awareness. I'm talking about its relationship with dreams. I'm talking about many, many things. And so when a patient comes to us with complaints, after a thorough examination and looking at the tongue and feeling the pulse in each wrist, both of which are extremely important diagnostic tools in Chinese medicine, we can arrive at what we call a pattern which is the same thing as a diagnosis, or equivalent to a diagnosis. At that point, then we can determine which points to use to treat the patient, and then which tools we're going to use, whether we're going to use acupuncture, cupping, gua sha, tweena, dietary therapy, herbal therapy, plum blossom, or whatever technique we choose. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate some of these techniques. It's important that you understand that if you choose to go to a doctor of Chinese medicine, that you find a practitioner that has gone through at least three to four years of education in Chinese medicine. I myself have had four years of school in Chinese medicine.